focused stands for from our creator's universal strategies evolve destiny staying focused could be your key to walking in purpose lead a full and productive life and see your business prosper now the hosts of stay focused radio deanna garlic and regina williams Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for Stay Focused Radio. I'm your host, Deanna Garlic. And Regina Williams. We thank you so much for waking up and tuning in with us. Um, it has been a pleasure being here with you every weekend. We have some awesome guests with us today. We're so excited about always bringing someone to you, a business owner, an entrepreneur, um, and we're excited to have with us photographer Zamani Feelings. Good morning, Zamani. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. It's been our pleasure. We, we've we known Zamani for um, quite some time now, and the relationship, I would say, has just grown and grown over the years. It's been awesome to see what God is doing in his life. But I want to let Zamani tell you that for himself. So, Zamani, could you just tell us just a little bit about yourself as we get started here? Okay, yeah. My name is Zamani Fellings. Um, I'm I'm a photographer, a portrait uh, event and sports photographer located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've been uh, running my business for about six years. Um, prior to uh, going full time with the photography, I was in the social services agency, uh, social services services industry. You could say I worked for a youth organization for eight years, and then a, a social work agency for another eight years. Um, uh, one of them, I was a facilitator for a uh, youth mentoring program. Uh, it was a teenage pregnancy prevention program for boys with an organization called Concerned Black Men. And the second agency was a uh, social work uh, agency, and I worked as a home visitor there and a uh, an administrative assistant. So, well. Zamani, just um, going from the industry of social services and then becoming a independent photographer. How does one make that jump? We can't probably see the correlation, but maybe you can enlighten us. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how related the two are. Uh, <laughs> but I really, um, I I came into photography just as a hobby. Uh, okay. Those other jobs were things that I was doing just to basically pay my bills. And um, and I, you know, I love both the jobs I had. I got into photography just um, to give me some like a creative outlet and something to do for fun. I actually got the camera because I was interested in doing uh, documentary film. I had no interest in photography at all. Wow! Uh, okay. I was actually going to buy a video camera. Uh, the only reason I ended up buying a DSLR, which is a, 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 the uh, digital camera, now is because uh, I saw a video and the background was blurry and it looked more filmic. And I wanted to get that look, and I asked around, and they told me uh, well, they're using the DSLR for that. And I said, well, isn't that a camera? They said, yeah, well, the cameras do video, um, but you're able to manipulate the backgrounds by changing lenses and give it more of a filmic look. So uh, I ended up buying a DSLR only because I wanted to have, like, a movie look to my uh, video. Uh, but after taking a photography class uh, to learn lighting and composition and everything for video, I ended up uh, developing an interest in, in pictures. Um, to some extent, I wanted to kind of have photograph. I wanted to do video in, um, or pictures that had a cinematic look about them, like I had snatched a picture from a movie frame or something like that. So um, I was only interested in just doing it as a hobby and something for fun, and I was just taking photographs and posting them on Facebook, and I had no interest in starting a business or having anybody even pay me or you know, I just wanted to go out and take pictures of whatever, you know, caught my eye and share them with people. And uh, it was just a fun hobby that I was doing, you know, on the side, you know, after work and you know, on the weekends um, for my regular day job. And it kind of just morphed into an actual business. Wow. I know. And so how did you go from, you know, leaving the social services uh, aspect of because we all have hobbies. I'm, I mean, we have our magazine, we have the radio show, and we, and we have our uh, other life uh, <laughs> that we call. Uh, but was there something that happened that made it uh, possible for you to take it full time? Like some event that happened? Um, I guess, I mean, I, I, I never really felt like a business owner. I never even thought of myself as ever owning a business. Um, I just felt like people enjoy my art. I always thought of myself more as a creative person and an artist. 
um, and more of a practical woman. But I just feel like people are just paying me for something that I do that they appreciate. Um, but I was I was working, so it wasn't like as romantic or as brave as most people think it is. Where they just feel like I just <laughs> okay, like dropped my job and I was like, I'm going to do this full time, and you know what I mean. I believe in this and that kind of thing. It was more. Uh, it just kind of happened naturally, and I was just really fortunate uh, that it happened that way. It was really organically. I started to take pictures, and people started to kind of um, to follow me on Facebook, and you know they were liking what I was doing. And uh, again, it was still just a hobby. And eventually, like someone would come out and ask me to take pictures of their child, and they were actually offering me money, and I didn't want it at the time because I, I didn't again see myself as doing this for as a business or getting paid to do it. And eventually, you know, I started getting a little jobs, events, um, portrait sessions, shooting somebody's kid. Um, then I got my first wedding. Um, and I was doing this at the same time while I was working. I was actually working two jobs. And uh, the agency, I left one place because I was just overwhelmed. And then the other agency that I was working for it closed down. Um, they lost their funding. So um, by that time, I was so busy with the photography that I had enough confidence in what I was doing to think that it could sustain me. And uh, it just kind of went from there. So mm -hmm. I think I was, I started doing photography. I bought the camera in late 2010. Um, and I, the agency I was working for shut down in 2013, I believe. Uh, so since then I've just been uh, doing photography full time, but it wasn't as like, you know, romantic a story. <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, as people, <laughs> You know, think, and it wasn't. Um, you know, I didn't take a whole lot of bravery for me. It was I got a chance to mm -hmm. see that I could sustain myself from what I was mm -hmm. doing while still having a safety net or having a job. So, 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 did it take maybe some friends or even um, family members saying you should charge people for this? You know, <laughs> people will pay a lot of money for this because people yeah, do. You know what people, it, it you know, took me to go out to one event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really didn't want to do, and it was really long. And then to say, okay, next time this happens, they're going to have to pay me for it. <laughs> yeah. it was like, I was there all day. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah it was, that was all it took. I said, okay, I'm, I, you know, next time I need to get something for this. It, it took me a while to really uh, mm -hmm. get to the point where I believed that I, you know, what I was doing was um, worth charging for. Uh, but it didn't get, it didn't take me long to, to realize that I needed to get something for what I was doing. Well, that's awesome, Zani. So, Zamani, so how can um, people see your work? Uh, my, my my general, I have two websites. My general website is uh, ZamaniFeelings dot com. That's uh, Z A M A N I Feelings, like the word feelings dot com. Uh, that's my real name. People always think it's like a stage name. <laughs> I did ask. I need you to know, I did ask. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so nobody did. Everybody always asks me, even when I like a client is writing me a check or something like that, or. They always like, well, it's okay. What's your real name so I can write this out, pull it out correctly, and I can tell them that's my real name. <laughs> um, a lot of people know now because they follow me on Facebook and that sort of thing. Um, but it's uh, ZamaniFeelings.com dot com is my portrait and event website. Um, I have another website that's dedicated just to sports photography, and that's uh, ZamaniFeelings dot net. That one is like a um, portfolio of my sports work and a game gallery. There is some sports on my other website, but. Um, the bulk of it is on the .NET site. What would you say would be your favorite um, environment for of uh, photography? Sports, weddings, trips? Like, what is your? Uh, right now, it's sports and and most like and I would say football. Mm -hmm. um, I do enjoy photographing children, like in natural light. Um, so you know, if I had to choose something, it would it would be football photography. But um, it, it really depends on the subject matter and the environment and the lighting um, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But um, I kind of I got into sports photography, and that's like a whole other subject. But um, it was kind of to sort of give me another avenue of something to do that it was purely for fun. Okay. And that ended up turning into a business, too. So it's kind of like in the same well, way that's that awesome. my business started. Um, but I, it was, I was actually kind of burned out at one particular point from doing all of these weddings and events and the portrait sessions and it still happens from time to time and um, the sports photography is actually something that kind of revived my love for photography because at different times and you know to be honest like it's days where I after, if I wasn't doing any uh, jobs I didn't want to touch my camera I didn't even want to look at it um, and so the, the sports photography gave me something to do that was just purely for fun purely just me out there shooting and it, you know I didn't have to worry about any expectations or anything like that and it was just it was something that just kind of 
restore my passion for photography in general. Wow, that's awesome. Because um, it sounds like, you know, you're working in your passion and you're getting paid for. And that's what we really try to teach people to do is to find out what you're good at or find out what you really, really like and turn that into a business. And it sounds like even though you, you, you stumbled upon it, it doesn't kind of matter because you, you found it, you have it. And it's mm-hmm. awesome that you even have found, you know, once you reach that point of burnout, the thing that has revived you in the sports photography. So um, yeah. I just want to um, applaud you for that, that some people Thanks. take, you know, a, a lifetime to do the things that, that you're doing right now. Have you ever thought about producing well, a book? Um, yeah, that's something that I have in mind. Um, and it's something that people, you know, always on me about. Like, you need to, to um, well, two, two types of books. One um, would be like an educational-based book. Um, where I would be teaching photography, um, and that's a process that I'm working on now in terms of writing as well as um, setting it up to do classes um, through a couple different venues, my own um, personal classes that I'll conduct, and then there's a nonprofit, and then there's a two nonprofits that I'll be um, working through to teach uh, photography classes. But um, and so a book will probably come sooner or later, um, but I'm still a <laughs> You know, I've been kind of procrastinating on that, and you know, I always get stuck with trying to choose the, like the ideal images and that sort of thing. Um, and something I'm learning is that you know, I can just I don't have to do everything myself, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and I can find somebody who does that for a living or wants to do it and, and is an expert at doing it, and I can just hand off stuff to them and and have them do it, and I don't have to take responsibility for everything. Uh, that's that's kind of something that I'm learning how to do. Um, okay. That's that's what we all have to learn. Actually, <laughs> we yeah, we um definitely. all right. We're about to go into um, a break, Zamani. But before we do that, I would like for you to give us your contact information. I know you did say your websites, but you can say that again. If even if you have people contact you any other ways, your phone number, your email, um, the best way for people to reach out to you. Let's um, hear oh, that sure. again. Um, they can use my go to my website to view my work. Again, it's ZamaniFilling dot com. Uh, ZamaniFillings.com or ZamaniFillings.net for my sports photography. And my phone number is 267-242-2027. That's 267-242-2027. And if they would like to email me, my email is ZAM919 at me.com. That's ZAM919 at me.com. Awesome. And when we come back from our break, maybe you can give us a little bit. I want to talk to you. I know that you've um, been able to photo- photograph the president. Like you've been <laughs> in some really interesting and fascinating um, situations with your photography. So I want to just, you know, give our listeners a little bit of that information as well. And, and hopefully they can go okay. to your website and check out some of those wonderful pictures like I did. Very excited <laughs> okay, once you. I got to that website and started seeing those pictures. I think I need my picture Thanks. taken. Oh, okay, okay, I don't know okay, if I, I can you. afford you though, but I think I need my picture I'm, taken. I'm not expensive at all. <laughs> uh, I, it's sort of a um, blessing that people will assume that when they go to my website and I always have to kind of make the point online that I'm not really expensive at all, especially in comparison, comparison to some other people that are pretty successful. Okay, well you okay. tell us all about it after the break. That's right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, great. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Do you own a business? Do you run a ministry? Or perhaps you have a desire to start one? Then here's a great resource for you. Stay Focused Magazine is an informative and inspirational publication that gives you everything you need to get started and to stay motivated. Let's face it, being in business or working in a ministry is challenging and sometimes draining. You need someone to help you stay on track and provide direction. Stay Focused Magazine provides information on technology, finance, education, health and wellness, business, leadership, marketing, and much more. It's everything you need to stay Stay focused and productive in your business or ministry and not leave your personal life behind. They publish a new edition quarterly, the latest in business trends, innovative concepts, and ready to implement strategies. Look them up on the web at stayfocusedmagazine.com. That's stayfocusedmagazine.com. And reach out via email, focusedplans at gmail.com. Also remember to find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Hello, everybody, and thank you for staying with us. This is uh, Stay Focused Radio, and we've been talking to Zamani Feelings, photographer, and he's been telling us just uh, how he has made a wonderful transition from from work to um, business owner. And he he really just kind of stumbled upon it through his hobby, but it has grown tremendously. And we wanted to mention that Zamani has done photography for Stay Focused Magazine. That is excellent. Um, he's also photographed our wedding, which was um, fabulous. Uh, <laughs> so Regina and I did get some pictures together there. Yes. And he's also done even some video clips for Stay Focus Magazine that we have posted up on our website, um, stayfocuswritersretreat.com. So when you go there, you can see uh, some video clips that Zamani has done for us. He is tremendous in um, all of the work that he does. And we would love for you to reach out to him about his photography work. Zamani, could you tell us a little bit more about just the interesting places that your photography has taken you or even um, some of the newest contracts that you have? Talk to us a little bit about that. With my portrait and event uh, photography and wedding photography, uh, I've been to, whew, it's hard to say, I've, I've done everything from uh, work for NAACP, um, I've done a lot of uh a lot of weddings all over the country. Um, I, I went to Cancun, Mexico to do a wedding. I photographed uh, President Obama uh, at Temple University. I photographed Michelle Obama. Uh, I photographed uh, uh, Vice President at the time, Biden, uh, in, in D.C. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, work for Esperanza College. I've done a lot of sorority work. I've done pretty much everything. Um, I've pretty much covered almost everything that you could think of mm-hmm. in terms of um, photographing events and uh, people so, uh, in general. So did any of that maybe surprise you that you're like, wow, they want me? Or uh, No, actually, not really. Um, I just, I never really thought of it like that. Uh, I mean, it was, uh, it was, I was always appreciative of the opportunities, but I never really thought of it. I think the, um, the, the things that I've photographed where I was, I was, I kind of had a slight wow factor was, um, me getting the opportunities to shoot sports in the uh, NFL in particular. Okay. Uh, because, I, you know, I started off um, with the sports photography, just um, kind of volunteering at some high schools, uh, Penn Charter High School and Central High School. Um, and that quickly kind of led to me getting to photograph uh, Temple football and some other um, uh, colleges. Uh, and I um, also just to mention, uh, Culture Player um, Magazine is, is the one who brought me into Temple University and uh, also Philadelphia Sports Digest uh, connected me with a lot of schools. But um, generally, it takes a while for you to get to the pro- professional sports, and it's a very difficult field to get into. Uh, so that was probably the biggest thing for me is to, to have started sports photography, and in a couple of years I was already at NFL games. Um, that was like a big deal for me because it, it was something that I like looked forward to or sort of aspired to, but I, I really didn't think it was going to happen for a long time. So mm-hmm. I, I felt really fortunate. Um, so I, I, this year, last season, I went to Pittsburgh to two, two games at the Steelers for the Steelers and also uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Florida. And I got to do the most traveling I've done with photography and, and most traveling I've done in my life was last year um, doing the away games for Temple and also the NFL game. Um, so I, I've never traveled that much in my life until this last year, and it was all because of the sports photography. Have you have you ever thought about um, mentoring um, individuals, you know, in the area of photography or expanding your scope and having other photographers under you? Oh uh, well, the first for the first part with the mentoring, I've I've been doing that kind of since I started. I always was open to helping people. Um, I want to start doing that on a professional level where I'm teaching and that sort of thing. I'm on a lot of photography groups on uh, Facebook uh, where I um, I post a lot of you know, suggestions, my tips, and I, I've, I've done a few articles that I post there. I've actually done a few videos, too, um, instructional videos. Uh, and I always have my inbox is always full on um, on the sports and portrait side with, with uh, photographers asking me questions about how to, you know, do certain things, how to shoot in low light and that sort of thing. Um, and the other question was, what was your other question? I'm sorry. It was, <laughs> <laughs> bringing other, bringing it. on other photographers into your uh, organization. You know, that's something I, when I do weddings, I always have an assistant, uh, okay. uh, Christopher Willis and Joni. Mm-hmm. 
uh, Ming Jong, Jong uh, or two people that I always brought on when I do weddings. But um, the one thing that's difficult uh, with photography for me is that um, it's a very individualized thing. Um, mm-hmm. And every photographer that gets to a certain level has their sort of their own style. Mm-hmm. And people are generally paying you for your own style. And it's not something that you can that teach someone else, really, you know, how to make certain mm-hmm. choices and, and then shoot and, and edit a certain way. Right. So it's very difficult for me to hire somebody and then send them to a job um, and have the, the client be okay with that because they want me and they want, they were hiring me and they're hiring me for my style. It's kind of like sending this, you know, taking a singer, somebody hires you as a singer and then you send another singer and say, well, you know, I trained her how to sing and they're like, no, <laughs> it's, you know, we want you. So yeah, it's been difficult one. for me to try to do that. But if anything, I'll do, if, if I can't do a job, I'll just pass it off to another photographer and then they just take the job and make the money themselves. And, you know, um, but yeah, that's, that's something that people always bring up. Like, well, why don't you just hire an, um, somebody else to do these things for you? And I always try to explain to them that, it's, you know, the client generally doesn't want that. They want me and they want my style. And um, so, so, uh, so if someone like is um, interested in being <laughs> being taught by you, mm-hmm. then how do do they just reach out to you? Should they contact you through through Facebook or through some other um, means? Yeah, they or? Can reach out to me. Um, I'm on Facebook um, under Zam919, uh, Facebook.com. Uh, that's where I uh, – Facebook has been the – um, basically, like my marketing tool, mm-hmm. um, okay. and again, it wasn't really intentional. It was just a place that I had to share my work, and it was also a place where I could join other photography groups and share my work. Um, but that's been the place that kind of generated the um, the interest in my work, and it's a it's a really good marketing tool for a photographer because, like, if I do a wedding and uh, I tag the bride and the groom in the wedding, then uh, everybody on there friends list each sees the photos and they see my name attached to it so mm-hmm. if i do a wedding generally you know uh, maybe uh, you know a few hours after i post the pictures uh i'll get friend requests from people that the only mutual friends we have are every bride and the groom um and was, i get a lot of work from that so um facebook was at least the initial um biggest thing that got to spread my my work around and then mm-hmm. since then there's been a lot of word of mouth marketing that's worked for me most of, I would say most of my jobs are word of mouth or repeat clients. Mm-hmm. So where do you where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know because I didn't know where I was going to be here five years ago. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know. That's always mm-hmm. a hard question. I mean, I can tell you what ideally okay. what I want to do is um, get to a point where I'm doing a lot more traveling and photographing games and um and I, I'm kind of moving around and, and being a little more selective about the, the, the work that I do and getting to do a lot. Um, I want to do wildlife photography, too. So I like to do a lot of traveling to do that. But um, I think basically I'll still be just doing my business and, you know, working independently, you know, as an independent contractor and, and that sort of thing and doing a lot more teaching. Um, and because I wanted the teaching is something else I wanted to do um, that will be like a, a more sustainable thing for my income so they can free me up to, to shoot more of what I want to shoot and I don't have to necessarily just be like a worker be like I am now <laughs> um, so you know because I'm, I'm kind of I'm really busy most of the time I, I really have like a, a free day off I may have three days off per month where I'm not doing anything yeah. at all so um, so how, how wanna, does that work ex- exactly Zamani um, I mean because people hire you for an event but also I don't know that people realize about the editing work because not only does the event take time what about do you do are you find yourself doing a lot of editing that takes a lot of time too uh yeah the editing uh it, depending on the length of the event if, if it's a um for weddings if it's a, if it's a 10 hour wedding you're basically editing for 10 hours uh and people don't necessarily realize that they you know they think they think you just take the pictures and then you send it over to them but you have to go through and process um all of the photos and make sure that you know, there's no out of focus shots, and make sure that all the pro, you know, the photos are, are exposed properly and that sort of thing. So, uh, but for the for the general stuff, like besides the weddings, just portraits and events and that sort of thing, the editing isn't really too time consuming. Um, my process has always been as I go out and I do a shoot, I generally try to come home and edit those pictures the same day or the next day, so I don't have things piling up on me. So, um, I I kind of developed a, um, a workflow where the 
the editing isn't too bad on me. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I get piled up depending on how much work I have, but it, it's not too bad. Um, I'm not one of those people that likes to make people wait for months for their photographs. I never oh, understand wow. mm -hmm. how photographers do that. Like, you'll do a wedding and you have to wait six months for your photos. I think that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we you agree know. with you. That's probably why your business is, is uh, excelling because that's one of the major things that people complain about. Okay, well, I spent all this money oh, yeah. and it's been three <laughs> months. I'm still waiting. You know, and yeah. but if you but the time you get that the pictures, the, the feeling yes. is gone. <laughs> yes, and but like, did yeah. I really wear that? I don't even. They probably already <laughs> arguing about that. <laughs> but, they know. had the first two arguments. Yes, but that is the biggest complaint. So just being able to get the job done and and then uh, get the folks their pictures probably is one of the biggest. Uh, uh, positives for you word of mouth wise anyway oh yeah he can get your pictures right back to you oh, not only yeah. are they good but you you know the mm -hmm. whole process the whole package is what people are looking for so it sounds right. like I understand too like some people uh, some photographers are probably have full time jobs um, oh, okay. and they have you know families and, and a whole lot of other responsibilities that, that I don't have so it's, I have more time to you know I can stay up till 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning every day working mm -hmm. on on stuff, but I think it's still kind of unfortunate that people have to wait that long because, like I said, it doesn't take more than a day to to edit pictures. I don't care how intensive it is; you can do everything in one day. Ooh. You know. All right, listeners, you heard that right? So right. that's so, right. Yeah, nobody should and, nobody and, should be waiting, making you take wait a year to get photos. And some people won't see any photos. Like you know, that's what's strange to me. But when I, like when I do a wedding, I immediately come home and I edit at least like thirty pictures. And I'll post them so the so the uh, bride and groom have something. Right, that's what at, I really liked know. about um, our wedding. We we had um, some pictures right away, and people were like, "Wow!" Um, so I I did want to just emphasize again that Zamani is very affordable. Um, he said it himself, and you I really I you get surprised when when you talk to Zamani and then you go talk to another photographer like, "Hmm." Um, so I do want to emphasize if you if you are interested if you're in the um, market to look for a photographer please reach out to him to either one of his websites zamanifeelings.com or zamanifeelings.net and we are just grateful to have you as our guest Zamani it's been a pleasure talking to you and hearing your story yeah we're going to have to bring him in the studio with us because there's a whole lot of <laughs> other things that I think our listeners would be interested to know um, so do you think you'll come in yeah, I'd love to do that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. As long as I don't to be on camera, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, you do we, fine yeah. on camera. You do fine. Uh, so um, okay, also, okay. look. we look forward to, we'll be um, producing, we'll be publishing an article very soon from Zamani. So we want you to look for that in Stay Focused Magazine, as well as um, more of his photography work. And please visit his website and reach out to him via his Facebook page and um, phone number and email address. Can you please give that to us one more time, Zamani? Sure. Um, on Facebook, you can find me uh, just by Googling Zamani Feelings, or you can go to Facebook.com slash Zam919. That's Facebook.com slash Zam919. Uh, my main portrait event and uh, wedding website is ZamaniFeelings.com. Uh, my sports gallery and website is ZamaniFeelings.net. And my telephone number is 267-242-2027. Thank you so much. And we just want to remind everybody, stay focused.